right to the bone, but don't cut through it. And then just follow this line all the way to the tail. Get to the tail, you stop. And you make a slice right there, okay? Then, you spread the meat apart and you run your knife flat along the bone between the meat and the bone. And you start peeling the meat off, okay? And we're doing it with the skin on. And just run. This knife isn't even that sharp. Okay. <laughs> so you slide it all the way along like so, so you get to the outer edge. Okay. That's one fillet right there. Okay. Then we go on this side here, you feel where the guts are? You don't go through the guts, you just stop right there. Same deal. Go. Now it doesn't look like much yet, but we'll see here. This is the best tasted fish. And you just real lightly fl flour it and just, you know, fry it up in butter. My dad, do you take the skin, the skin off? off? No, 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 I'll show you how to get the skin off too. Um, my dad used to roll them up in instant mashed potato buns. And that works out good too. He used to have flounder and eggs. You know, we used to get about 50 of these on every single excursion trip when I was a kid. And wow. cleaning these darn things is what put me through college. There's just so many of them, and they're just now making a comeback. They disappeared from us for many years. Water temperature, you think? Oh, I don't know. Water diversion, maybe. Something. But they're coming back. This is the best year I've seen probably in maybe 15 years. Alright, so the, the two little flaps, you don't get as much, but you get a little bit. And when you taste them, you're going to wish you could get still more. alive. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, now he's got to go get fat again, so we'll let him go. Alright, now, this is what you got to do. Once you do this, chilies, okay, because the meat's like jelly right now. But once you get the meat, I'm just on the phone right there. Once you get the meat firmer, like when you put it on ice, and you put skin side down on your chopping board, okay, and just hold the flap, same thing, run the knife to the skin, but don't cut through it, and just run it and wiggle it, and then what a lot of guys do is they take this little flap, and they kind of tug on it a little bit, and you hold the knife down kind of firm on the thing, but don't cut through the skin, and you just pull. There you go, boneless, skinless. And I'm telling you, man, this stuff is so good. There you got light meat, you got dark meat. But just a little bit of flour or cornmeal, that's all, you know, and just a little pan fried butter. Real delicate, real delicate. Oh man, I'm telling you, this stuff tastes so good. Now, are there bones in that? There's no bones. No bones in that's that. That's it. Okay. That's it. So, the little flap is going to all fall out. Then you get the bone. There you go. And that was a small one. Here, you want me to do the big one real fast? Sure, sure you do. Sure. Oh, this is tasty here. I like this one. Can you tell the difference between a flounder and a halibut? Put your finger in the mouth. If you get your finger back, it's a flounder. <laughs> halibut have teeth. Nasty teeth. They gotta be 22 inches long before you can keep them. Do they taste the same? Uh, no, actually, uh, halibut is more of a whiter, denser meat. Good tasting, real just creamy white. Flounder meat uh, got a little nutty taste to it. It's, uh, it's a little different. Yeah, they weren't 
spawning in it. They actually, they need a little fresh water to spawn in. They, they, they're not really truly a saltwater fish. They're more of a brackish water fish. And they, uh, when you get the rains like we got here, they come up in the rivers to spawn. And so, but they need kind of a mixing zone. They, they can't have all salt, can't have all fresh. And we weren't getting that. We weren't getting that recipe for a lot of years. And I don't know about this year because it's been so salty, but all of a sudden uh, they're back. rods and little hooks and you find a little spot on the sandbar. They're fun to catch. You just got to make sure you have heavy enough line because every once in a while something happens like what happened to us today. <laughs> you end up catching the sturgeon. <laughs> the little rods there. <laughs> Dad used to get pissed off because we'd bring our little trout rods out all the time. My brother caught a 54-inch sturgeon on six-pound test line. <laughs> wow. Oh, my dad was pissed off. <laughs> we both talk on BB guns at home. Dad, it's so fun. We actually caught a flounder last year that weighed about eight pounds. It took two hooks. It took took a couple man wives fishing together at the end of the day. Both caught. He was a greedy boy. Took a picture of it on my digital camera. Took it home, and it was a brand new camera. I pressed the delete instead of save, and that was the end of that fish. <laughs> And as far as I know, I played that fish out for those two, and they just told me the other day, they still got it in their freezer. Mm. I should have just let that rascal go. He was big. They should have been cooking that thing up. Yeah. Fresh. All right. Look at all that.